Praise the Lord, greater faith. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Praise the Lord, greater faith. Man, I forgot that I told him I wasn't coming back. Amen. But he took heed. Look at what God's doing. Come on, y'all need to celebrate what God's doing. Now, now I, I think in a lot of cases we when we clap and we say celebrate, we think about the facilities, and I just think that it's absolutely amazing to be in such a place of excellence and what God has done with the facility. But in all actuality, when I say look at what God's done, I'm looking at y'all. So hold up. Let's say that again. Look at what God's done. It sounds like y'all got a problem celebrating what God has done in your life. It sounds like you got a problem celebrating what God is doing in your life. No, 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 no. Seriously. It sounds like y'all got an issue with yourself. Oh, let me say it again. Look at what God is doing. You need to look at your neighbor and say, look at what God is doing. You don't know the hell I've been through to get here today. You don't know what I went through last night to get here. We have stopped celebrating showing up. We have stopped celebrating getting up. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody didn't get up this morning. You ought to praise God that I got up and I showed up. Because the devil is defeated and God is exalted. Come on, clap your hands while you're on your feet. Let's honor your covering, amen, your leaders, amen, my friend, Bishop, amen, and his beautiful wife, Bishop, Lady, Lady Evans. I love him. I love him. Real quick, um, on um, um, Black Friday, we're releasing uh, a book, and you, 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 you here today. I'm on assignment, and um, but I, I completed a devotional called "Call to the Marketplace," and um, we have these with us. My beautiful daughter, can y'all stand up and celebrate destiny, y'all? My beautiful baby girl. She flew in from D.C. to be with her daddy. Amen. Love her. Bishop, I just want to give you this real quick. Hey, Amen. I want to give you this real quick. So in his life, y'all, hey, let me tell you something. Y'all got a real G. Can y'all say, man, y'all got a real G. Hey, Amen. Y'all got a real one. You have one, hey, Amen. who cares about you. Hey, Amen. He will fight somebody for you. Listen, you, you, listen, I can't fight. And y'all better surround yourself around people that can fight. Hey, Amen. So I hang around people. Hey, Amen. I start fights and then I just let them fight. Hey, Amen. So I'm excited about being here. I'm excited about being in, amen, Alabama. Amen. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Amen. Amen. When in Rome, you do as the Romans do. Amen. Praise God. Um, thank God. Listen, let's go to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. Um, we do understand. Can I, is there a clock anywhere? I need to make sure. Amen. I stand. They're going to tell me. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Amen. Numbers chapter number 13. Numbers chapter number 13. Upon the invitation, the Lord began to speak to me. And um, we're not here to impress um, no one. So a lot of you all don't even know who I am. And that's good. Because my assignment, I'm 55. I know I don't look 55. Amen. But I'm at the place in ministry where I don't do this to impress nobody. I come to impress some things upon you, um, what God is about to do in your life. Amen? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God's about to do some stuff in your life. Numbers 13, verse number 23, one passage of scripture, amen. And it's, the Bible says, and they came unto the brook of Iscol, and they cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. They bared it between two, upon, uh, between two upon a staff. Now, I want to paint this picture with y'all so quick, so, so important. The grapes were so big that they had to put them on a pole and two men had to carry them. Look at your neighbors, they have some big grapes. And the Bible says, and they bought of the pomegranates 
and of the figs. Father, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you for an opportunity to be in a city we've been in before, but to be in a new place. We thank you for the new things that you're doing in all of our lives. Father, we thank you that you are releasing kingdom assignment. We thank you, Lord God, that it is your desire, Lord God, not just to, um, for us to die to fulfill, to fill heaven up, but Lord, you want to use us to fill the earth up with heaven. And we thank you for this. We thank you for the assignment. Pray that you will arrest the hearts and the minds of your people. I pray that you will break up the follow ground of our hearts so that your word can be received and it will be applied in our everyday life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This morning I want to speak to you on a subject entitled, I was born to taste the grapes. Look at somebody near you and say, I was born to taste the grapes. Amen. My assignment to this house and to the people of this house is to, in the beginning, to share with you three things that God spoke to me a few years back when he began to do some things in my life. The first thing God said to me, he said, son, I need you to grow your belief. I need you to grow your faith. What I desire to do through you, it's bigger than where you are right now. It's not only bigger than you, but your faith is not on the dimension that it needs to be on. So I need you to take some time to work on your belief and work on your faith. The second thing he said to me is he said, son, as you work on your belief, I'm going to call you to make some bold moves. Some of you need to hear this, that this word today is going to cause you to get out the boat. Because the truth of the matter, if the Lord is outside the boat, the boat is no longer safe. It's more important for me to be where God is than where God was. So in order for me to be where God is, I got to be willing to, amen, make some bold moves and get out of my comfort zone. I'm talking to some people in here. God has been talking to you. He's been saying some things to you, and you've been looking around at everybody else trying to get them to understand what God told you. But let me just share this with you all. I never take advice from people that got dry feet. If I've been called to do to make a bold move, I'm not going to ask you and you in the boat with me because your feet is dry. It's time that you understand that if God is causing you to strengthen your belief and make bold moves, he's not calling, calling everybody around you and you cannot, amen, run opinion polls with people who got dry feet. I never take advice from people whose feet is dry. I always look at, amen, people's feet and if they feet wet, I'll listen to them. Just a little nugget, just a little nugget. The other thing he said to me, amen, he says, son, you must understand that the moves that you're about to make, I'm going to make them beyond the church building. Hmm. It's interesting that when it comes to church, sometimes there's a big disconnect to where we can believe in the building, but we don't believe in ourselves. There are three components to the church. You have the universal church, which is the body of Christ, and th that is um, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Amen, they once were sinners. They said, Lord, save me, and they got washed in the blood of the lamb. They are part of the universal body of Christ. Those are the ones that he's gonna, amen, on, upon his return, we're gonna be caught up in the air to meet him, and we're gonna go to heaven. Universal church. But then you have the building. Where we are right now, this is the church building. Somebody say church building. But then you have the believer. It's interesting that we have more confidence in the building than we do ourselves. The believer. So he told me, he said, I need, you, I, need you, I need you to do three things while you're there. He says, first of all, I need you to deal with the disconnect. I said, what's the disconnect? Oh. And when he spoke to me, oh, you're speaking my language. Here is the problem. The disconnect is that we have separated work and worship. 
The Hebrew word for work is the same Hebrew word for worship. It's called avadah. God never meant for your work and your worship to be separate. He meant for them to be one. So some people, they act one way when they go to church, and then they act another way when they at work. Oh, come on, y'all can clap. They act one way when they at church, but they act another way when they on college campus. God never meant for your work and your worship to be separated. He wants the believer to understand that it's time to merge our work and our worship so that where I work is my worship and where I worship is my work. A lot of people are confused because they think that my purpose and my paycheck is two different things. So when I go to church, that's worship. But when I go to work, that's work. No. God wants you to understand that what you do in the marketplace is just as important as what you do in ministry. Okay, the Bible says that they added to the church daily. Now, how can you add to the church daily when we're not in the church daily? They go to the book of Acts. The Bible said they added to the church daily. How can you add to the church daily when they weren't in church every day? The real essence of church is when the believer who is the church go into marketplace and you are equipped to be the church and you share your faith on your job, in your businesses, on college, you let your light shine, you become the salt of the earth. Somebody say, I'm salt. No, no, y'all got to do better than that. Somebody say, I'm salt. You know what the word salt means? It means the elite ones. So a believer who's in the marketplace, you are the elite one. You are the elite one. You're representing God's kingdom. You're representing God's glory. And the definition also means the ones who raise the standard. So listen, you come to this hub. You come to this church to get equipped. But when you leave here, you go into the marketplace as the elite one and you're going to raise the standard. God, I need somebody on this side, amen, to, to holler at your boy and say, I'm the standard. I'm the standard. Amen. I am the standard. Why? Not because of my degree. Not because of what I drive. Not because of what I wear. It's because I am a child of God. I am the light. I am the representation of Jesus Christ in the marketplace. Somebody say, I'm the standard. We are the standard. So we have to get rid of this big disconnect that we separate work and worship. Are y'all feeling me? I, 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 got, I got to get y'all to understand something because something getting ready to happen in your life. The Lord told me, he said, tell Bishop, amen, that, 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 that. We was riding in the car. Bro, can I talk to you? Riding in the car. And he says, he starts talking too much. Yeah, I said, the bishop started talking too much. He started talking about, he said, we a model. I said, oh, God, I'm in the right place. Because guess what God said to me? He said, greater faith is not a church he's called to mimic. Truth of the matter, there are too many churches mimicking church. There are too many people. I'm, I, and I'm not hating, I'm just speaking the truth. There are too many people watching reels and watching all these going to these church growth con conferences. And the truth of the matter, church growth focuses on, amen, quantity, but it doesn't focus on quality. What God is doing with this man is focusing on quality. He is in your life to, put, to improve the quality of your life. He wants you to be the best that God wants you to be. So he can't always tell you what you want to hear. He got to tell you what you need to hear. Hey, but can I talk to y'all? Your life will grow when you put yourself around people who will tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. You need to be around people that's going to, if your breath stinks, tell me my breath stinks. Don't let me be walking around here with bad breath. Give me a mint. But some of y'all so used to hanging around haters, amen, people who come, who competing against you and they don't want you to be the best. They don't want you to be the elite one. 
So now let you live any kind of way, talk any kind of way, walk any kind of way. Look at your neighbor and say, tell me the truth. I want to be great. I want to be the best at being me. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. Don't try to get me to be you. Help me be the best me. Amen, because I'm a horrible you, but I'm a better me. So, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. He says, he says that greater faith has been called to be a model. Not mimic. Somebody say, I ain't mimicking nobody. Don't you know that your uniqueness is in your, your anointing is in your uniqueness? And one of the ways that the enemy can restrict you is he gets you to start moving in image and you don't, you, you forget about your identity. Come here. Amen. When David got ready to go fight, Saul, go fight Goliath, Saul tried to put his image, his armor on David. And when David put that armor on, he says, I can't move in this. What are you getting at? Some people, amen, will try to put their identity on you. But watch this. If it don't work for you, why do you think it's going to work for me? If you don't like being you, why do you think I would like being you? I just got to be the best me I can be. I might be ugly, but I'm going to be the best me be ugly. I might be five, seven and a half, but I'm going to be the best. Look at your neighbor and say, be the best you. Be the best you. Be the best you. People will make you feel bad about being who you are because you don't hit a key like everybody else. Hit, hit your own keys. Hurry up, hurry up. So, 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 he says, tell Bishop that and tell Greater Faith, watch this, y'all. Y'all ain't been this way before. So, yeah. Y'all ain't been this way before. The way you going in your life right now, you ain't never been this way before. That's why some of y'all feel like y'all crazy. Anybody other than me feel like y'all crazy sometimes? I need to find out who I'm talking to. What's wrong with me? Because the way God leading you to do something ain't never been done. You can break generational curses. Amen. Oh, God, can I prophesy real quick? Five of y'all getting ready to be the first multi-millionaires of your family. I need to find them five. Where y'all at? Holler at me. I need to find them five. You getting ready to have more money than anybody in your family. And you ain't going to be no basketball player. You ain't going to be no football player. God getting ready to rain on your head. Who am I talking to? Say, I'm one, I'm one, I'm one, I'm one. Holler at you. I'm breaking generational curses in my family. Hurry up. Hurry up. He said, he said, he said, y'all going to be the man, y'all going to be the model because of the mandate and the mantle. Come, somebody say mandate and mantle. There's a mandate on your life. But then he also said, he said, y'all getting ready to experience miracles, signs, and wonders. <laughs> Amen. No, no, no. I'm not just talking about the church. Uh, y'all getting ready to experience miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. In the marketplace. God's getting ready to use your hands to lay hands on the sick. And they're going to be healed. God's getting ready to use some of y'all college students to start revivals. <laughs> Amen. On the college campuses. Amen. God says you're getting ready to be miracles, huh? signs, and wonders. <laughs> But then, here's why I want to be. He says, tell them they're getting ready walking money. Did, did y'all hear that? He said, no, no, let me break it down specifically. He says, tell the people that I'm getting ready to supernaturally cancel debt in their lives. First of all, amen, those of you that got some student loans, stand on your feet and holler at me. Amen. God getting ready to do it. I'm here to tell y'all that this ministry is getting ready to experience supernatural debt cancellation. Let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all why. Why? He getting ready to turn your debt into income and investment money. Some of you got in debt because you didn't know no better. And God's getting ready to supernaturally get you all out so y'all can help fund ministry. Yeah. 
God is up to, okay, okay, let me, let me give you, this. there was a widow woman who had sons, the creditors was getting ready to come and take them. She went, why, oh God, she went, come here, bro, she went, come here, bro, no, no, you, you come here, bro, she went to her prophet and said, they coming, watch what's about to happen, they coming to take my sons. He didn't make her shout. He gave her a strategy. God's getting ready to give Bishop strategies that's getting ready to help y'all come out. It don't do you no good. Now, I ain't against the good old shout, but it don't do you no good to shout but still come down and be in the same situation. She didn't need a shout. She needed a strategy. He asked her, watch this, what do you have in your house? She said, all I got. Well, let me help y'all. Some of y'all got to stop overlooking what you got because God getting ready to take what you got to give you what you need. Stop overlooking what's in your house. Let me say it again. God's getting ready to take what you got to give you what you need. Me, okay, make that live. I made a promise to my daughter that if she go to college, she could go debt free. But there was a problem. I didn't have no money. But I, what I had was an idea. So I took my little idea in my backyard and I started working it. And there she stands right there. Ain't got no debt. No student loan debt. No car payment debt. Where y'all at? Here is what happens. Gave her a strategy. She went and started a business. Paid the people she borrowed from back. And the scripture says she lived off of it and her children. She created generational wealth. I need 10 people in here. You believe God can use you to change the whole generational wealth? So... So he says, businesses are getting ready to be birthed in here that's going to create debt cancellation and generational wealth. I need you to get out of your seat real quick. Run to two people that can identify to you and say, I'm getting ready to start a business and I'm getting ready to get out of debt. Run to two people real quick. Oh, my God. Hurry up, Knox. Hurry up, Knox. Uh, oh, my God. Y'all ready to ride? Y'all ready to ride? Let's go. Y'all ready? Okay, I, I'm finna prophesy over here. Y'all getting ready to do something, musicians. Amen. Don't happen to musicians. God's getting ready to give y'all supernatural debt cancellation. Ideas are getting ready to flow through y'all as y'all play. Amen. And y'all are going to be able to do some stuff to change the whole trajectory of your families. Can somebody get happy for the musicians? One song can cancel that. One song. One idea. Somebody shout witty inventions. God, I wish I had time. I wish I could. I gotta hurry up. I gotta hurry up. The text says, Amen, that he sent the spies to the land. Amen. To see what the see what the land looked like. Now, I'm, I'm getting ready to start an argument with the text. Amen. Because y'all know, because y'all Bible scholars, that when they came back, they start, 10 of them started complaining about their ability to do what they already done. Brother, can, can, can you get happy for me? Now, watch this, bro. They come back with grapes, talking about they can't get the grapes. Ho, 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 ho. Why are you telling these people they can't do what y'all already done? What are you getting at? God told me to tell y'all, y'all don't need no miracle. Y'all need a memory. Because the same God that did that for you two years ago is the same God that's getting ready to do what you need him to do right now. I double dog you to stand on your feet. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I don't need no miracle. I just need to use my memory. Because the same God back then is the same God right. Shucks. I'm 
getting ready to preach to myself. I don't need a miracle. I need a memory. Oh, folks, say it like this. Amen. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's... Look at your neighbor and say, same God back then, same God right now. So, so, so. So watch this. The Bible says, amen, he told them to spot a land, but he never told them to bring anything back. But when they went into the land, Bishop, here's what blessed me. Amen. They came back with evidence. Somebody shout evidence. They came back with an evil report, but they came back with evidence. The evidence was the grapes. Somebody shout grapes. Well, I know y'all may not understand how that relates to me but grapes are symbolic of promises uh, let me help y'all look at somebody say I was born to taste the grapes you got to understand that when they came back they had some evidence from the promised land and God told me to tell y'all the stuff that he did in your life previously was not the full manifestation it was just the down payment it was just the evidence okay y'all looking at me crazy if he gave you the house he can pay the house off if he gave you the ability to start the business he can bless the business become a billion dollar business look at your neighbor and say all I got is the down payment all I got is the evidence but the same God that helped me get the evidence is the same God that's going to give me everything okay watch this but here it is, here it is. They say, we can't do it because of the giants. Let's deal with the giants. Look at somebody say, deal with the giants. Okay, first thing I need y'all to understand that when it comes to you tasting the grapes, you will never taste grapes that you don't take. So you can't sit back and be lazy. Oh my God, I'm sick and tired of lazy, bougie, don't want to do nothing saints. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to go get it. You got to go get it. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent. You got to take it. But watch this. You will never take it, catch this, when the giants are bigger than your grapes. When you, now we say, Sister Nepink, you look so beautiful. Hey, my, watch this. Grapes are symbolic of promises. They came back with the grapes that the giants were protecting. And they came back talking about the giants while they had the grapes. Can I ask you a question? How did they get the grapes if the giants were so big? Y'all look like y'all intellectual. How did they get the grapes if the giants were so big? Could it be that they were more focused at that time on the grapes? And they took their eyes off the giants. Don't you know you do more for God when you get focused on what he promised you? So, so what, are you, what are you getting at? Your grapes promises have to be bigger than your problem, your giants. Are y'all with me? Here's the second thing I want to tell y'all. Y'all ready? The giant, the grapes don't just go to the holy, they go to the hungry. Some of y'all save, but you ain't got no grapes because you ain't got no hunger. Just because you save and holy don't mean you hungry. That's why I got to be around folk who save. And sometimes I go around people who ain't saved. Because it seems as if the unsaved more hungry than the saved. <laughs> Bruh, I don't know who you are. I ain't never seen you in my life. But let me tell you something. You getting ready. God's getting ready to change the whole trajectory of your life. 
he's been dealing with you about some stuff on the inside of you. And I come all the way from North Carolina to let you know you ain't crazy. You different. But there's a hunger. And you got to go towards where the hunger is taking you. See, the issue with the church is that we focusing on dress too short. Shouldn't wear this on your head. Where your hunger at? So the grapes don't just go to the holy. They also go what? Y'all got that? Okay, now watch this, watch this, watch this. God never put grapes in their mouth. He put them within their reach. In other words, y'all talking about I'm waiting on God to do it and bring it to me. When God say, I ain't putting them in your mouth, you ain't no baby. I'm putting them within your reach. And you got to reach. Because if you don't do nothing to get something, you'll keep the same mentality. Did, did that help y'all? When he gave me the idea for that, y'all, I ain't have a spoon. I didn't possess a spoon. But God put everything within my Come on, I want you to stretch your hands out like this and just say, my reach. That means that you got to move. Okay, let me give you all this for free. The place where you get the promise ain't the place where you're going to be given it. God, when is going to come? When you're going to go get it. I don't know about y'all, but in North Carolina, we got grocery stores. And you can be in your car, and if you want to go to the grocery store, you got to get out your car. But the moment, watch this. But, but the closer you get to the grocery store, when you get close enough, you hit a mat. And when you hit the mat and your weight hit the mat, the door swing open. It's not until your weight hit the mat that the door open. It's not until your weight come into proximity that the door is open. Why should God open the door and you still at home? When is it going to happen? When you put your foot on it. Am I boring y'all? Okay, here, here, here's our thing I want to give y'all. Y'all ready? ready for this? Giants never guard small blessings. So if you're up against a big problem, it's only because, I'm preaching to me, y'all, because there's a big promise. Did y'all hear me? No, no, no. I, I, I need 10 people who you, up, you think you're up against something big right now. The enemy just trying to distract you because what he guarding is big. Pastor Mike say, it's going to be big. It's going to be what? Big. Last two years of my life, has been hell. Absolutely, positively, hell. Wish I had time to tell my story, but even in the midst of all the hell I've been through, what's kept me alive is grapes, promises. But watch this. It's not necessarily grapes. It's the grapes that became raisins. Because raisins is nothing but dried up grapes. But the purpose of raisins is when they dry up, they're for the journey. You can eat them later. Some of you all, your grapes have dried up. Uh, they're raisins, and they've been fueling you when you didn't think you had no hope. God would bring the promise back up. And they just, you've been living off the residue of what he told you five, ten years ago. But raisins are still. Am I helping you? So here it is. You will never taste what you do not take. Grapes. 
Grapes don't grow in ministry. They grow in marketplace. You're trained how to identify the grapes and how to pick them, but you got to go into the marketplace. Some of you have to understand that while you worship, you come here, your grapes are out there. Here's, here's just a, a nugget. They started talking about all these ites that was in the promised land. If you study the ites, especially based upon Deuteronomy 7, there were seven of them. They're actually seven mountains of industries, spears. Every ite, watch what I'm about to say, was over a mountain. And that's what they began to complain about, is that they saw what was governing that, those industries. Here's what I want y'all to understand. While we come to worship and we're going to be strong, God wants you to go get the grapes that's governing industries. So where you work is just as important as where you worship. Come here, brother. Come here. Yeah, yeah. He told me that he worked, went to UA. He worked, I forgot what he said he did. But what I did remember is he says his passion is to go into mortgage brokering. He helps people get loans. His voice began to change as he talked about doing that. What God is doing is placing this brother into the spear or the mountain of business. And he wants him to take the grapes, the promises that he's made him, he's got to go get them and he wants him to dominate. Do I have anybody in here? Amen. You're in education. Come here. You're, you're, you're in education. You're a school teacher, principal. Come. All, all my educators, come here real quick. Just come here. Come here. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. How many, do I have anybody that's in entertainment? The music industry. Music industry. Okay. What? Okay, turn that way. Music industry. Education. Government. Work for city council. Government. Come here. Are y'all, have, have I bored y'all? Are y'all with me? Business, government, education. Of course, we got religion already here, but yes. Even in that. See, here's what happens God wants to so anoint y'all that He wants to give you influence in your industries. The grapes are the promises of God that he is going to occupy places in the world where he's going to release his glory through the people that he has in those mountains. Watch this. Y'all know that all of them, 10 came back and they didn't enter in, but there was two that, and one of them said at 85 years old, this is what he had the audacity to say, give me my what? Mountain. And he went at 85 years old and dominated the mountain. First lady and pastor, come here. Come up here, Bishop. So here's what happens. Come up here. God has raised up this man and this woman of God to create amazing worship, create an experience, but more importantly, to strategically train you all to be ministers in the marketplace. Can y'all say amen? amen? I need some college students. Give me a college student. College, come here, college student. Come here, come here. That's you. Stand right here. That's education. God wants glory to where he breaks out revival. You know why college campuses are so important? Because when you look at all of these areas, these industries, they're training people for them. But they're training people to make a paycheck. 
But God says, I'm going to, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless your finances. But I'm getting ready to give you stupid favor. And the Bible said that everywhere Joseph went, he had favor. Let me tell y'all, Joseph was never in the church. He was in the marketplace. So I'm here to tell y'all, what I need y'all to understand, all of y'all, is that y'all got to get excited about going out here in this marketplace and taking them grapes that God gave you. It's called the promised land. The promised land is not the church. The promised land is the church positioned in worldly positions and we're taking over because God wants to fill earth with the glory of his kingdom. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? So watch this. cluster of grapes can you imagine how big them grapes was bro, that they had to carry between two people but they got these guess what these were they were in the promised land and they went and got them and brought them back guys God's got big grapes waiting on y'all you got to take your speaking in tongue self you got to take your shouting self and get off the seat and do nothing. Go to your job and be the intercessor. Go to your job and be the apostle. Go to your job and be the prophet. Go to your job and be the evangelist. Go to your job and be the teacher. Start your business because God's getting ready to take over the earth and he's going to use Believers who are hungry to taste the grapes. I come from North Carolina to increase your hunger, to let you know that God got more. I want you to lift your hands in this place right now and begin to, God, increase my hunger. I want you to come and grab a grape. 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 If I was in the back, I would come. They ain't coming to you. You gotta go get them. Come on. I want you to look at the touch two people. Tell them I was born to take and taste the grapes. I was born to take and taste the grapes. Greater faith. Go get the grapes! Go get the grapes! 